All right, peace and abundance, everybody. Welcome back. Another episode of Market Review. Wednesday, January 5th. Welcome to Market Review. Show where we go over technicals, fundamentals. We have debates. We have rants. The whole nine. So this is your first time joining us. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you're watching the recording. Um, and we're gonna get into it. You know, started off with our affirmation of the day. All right, so today's affirmation of the day is all is well in my world. All is well in my world. I always say, say it out loud, write it down, put that energy out. All right, let's get some housekeeping out the way. Uh, so tonight, we got my brother Keith Mitchell, uh, world renowned yogi master, mindfulness coach, former all pro NFL player. So he's gonna be doing a class tonight on mindfulness for the mastermind group. It's gonna be open enrollment. So make sure y'all tap into that. Uh, I'll post the Zoom link, should be posted everywhere. Uh, but you know, if you can't find it, it's in my bio on Instagram, MJ the Mastermind or the Mastermind Group LLC. Uh, so make sure y'all tap into that. That's gonna be the start of our, our mindfulness curriculum. All right, and make sure y'all sign up for y'all, you know, 14 day free trial for the mastermind group. Now let's jump right into these, these charts and you know, analyze this price action. All right. So today, you know, we had the, the minutes from the December Fed meeting, right? Um, and you know, that really showed that, you know, the Fed is gonna be aggressively dialing back policy help. And, you know, they're pricing in, you know, based on the expectations, now we're looking at a 75% chance that we will be getting um, rate hikes in March, right? You know, prior, you know, we're kind of pricing in around the summertime when taper room will end. But now it's looking like we might get those rate hikes in March and we got, uh, I think private sector jobs numbers earlier this morning, and those were double uh, the expectation. So the employment, you know, the jobs numbers are looking pretty strong. We'll get some more data on that um, on Friday. Uh, but so far, based on the numbers today, you know, it's looking pretty strong. Right? Um, so Along those lines, the committee announced it will speed up the tapering pace of its monthly bond buying program. Under the new plan, the program would now end around March, after which it would free up the committee to start hiking rates. Right. Current Fed fund futures market pricing is indicating about a two to one chance of the first hike coming in March, according to CME's Fed Watch tool. Traders figure the next increase would come in June or July followed by a third move in November or December. All right, so it's kind of looking, it's kind of like our schedule for the rate hikes this year. Um, now you can see as, the, you know, as these notes came out, you can see the market, you know, reacted strongly. Um, the market reacted strongly, you know, when that news came out. I right, so you can see right around two o'clock when those minutes came out, you see the market, the market started to take a slide. Now, we kind of talked about this yesterday, you know, you know, when I had talked about this doji candle, how, you know, that was pretty bearish. Now I was expecting us to pull back a little bit to 4,700 to our old, our old resistance, like you can see here, and then kind of find support and then bounce. But that sell off kind of accelerated as we closed the day. Look at the 15 minute. You know, we started the base and buyers stepped in a little bit here. Uh, but then, you know, around 345, that sell off accelerated. So we'll have to see, you know, you know, if this continues tomorrow, right? Um, now, when we zoom back out to the daily, you'll see that. We kind of got a double top. Kind of got a double top up here. We got this first top came down. Another top 
and now now we're selling off, right? When we look at the weekly, you'll see that if we close this week below this 47, the low of last week, which is 47, 13.25, um, I think I think we could uh, the sell off could accelerate. All right, we do have a weekly demand down here. So if we're not able, if buyers aren't able to hold us above the 47.13, last week's low, I think we, we could probably see, you know, price slide down to 4,600 and below into this weekly demand, All right? And probably test that, um, that 20 EMA. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I would want buyers to step back in and kind of push us back above the support and last week's low. But we just got to see over these next two days what happens. Now the NASDAQ um, had an even worse sell off. And, you know, you know, last week was kind of a little bit of foreshadowing with this uh, upside down hammer candle, right? When we, when we entered back into our supply zone. Now you can see the sell-off kind of, kind of accelerated um, today. We are inside of a daily demand, right? So we might find a bounce off the 100-day like we did you know, earlier um, last month when we bounced off the 100-day. So we just gotta see. And if, if, we, if we break through this demand, not gonna be good. It's not gonna be good. We might see a 200 day test, which would be about 11%, 10 to 11% off the highs. But we're gonna need buyers to hold this 15,700 or this 100 day. Um, but it's not looking good. Now you can, um, and it makes sense because oh yeah, go ahead, Aki. <clears throat> um, peace and abundance, everyone. I remember you saying that, you know, if a level gets hit well, too many times, it becomes weaker, right? So I mean we hit that zone about three times already. Four actually. Which which one? On ES? Uh no, what you got up right now? This is on the NASDAQ, right? Yeah, on the NQ, that zone. So how about the demand? Uh, yeah, the demand zone. So mm -hmm. back in uh, was that eleven twenty? No, come twelve six. Twelve six, it got hit, right? Then twelve twenty, uh, I got hit, bounced off it. Nah, this train ain't stopping. It's an express. Then we cutting through. We slicing through it like a hot knife through butter. Welcome to the correction direct, directed by the Fed, produced by Jerome Powell and the committee. <laughs> I sound like the hottest album out right now. You know it. So if we do cut through, um, if this 100 day doesn't hold, we have one more demand at 15,383. And you know, if that doesn't hold, we'll probably see the 200 day. We might, we might see under 15,000. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's interesting, y'all. It's interesting. Fed meeting in March, looking to hike rates in March. So we kind of like pulled the schedule up like the whole three months right now. That's kind of what like what, what the market is reacting to right now. So like I said prior, rate hikes are supposed to come closer to like June, right? But now we're looking at um, March, which is you know only two months away. So we might we might see a correction come a little earlier than expected. But just got to keep an eye out on the price action now. If buyers can't get us back above, um, we'll probably see a 100-day test on ES. All right. Um, what I think now, based on this price action, 
what I think could happen. Um, so this is one theory, right? We bounce, buyer step back in around 4,700, and we bounce and we continue back up further deeper into January, right? Or we fall down to support or the 100 day, we bounce, come back up, and then we continue down and setting us up for that correction that we've been waiting on, right? And then that will put us at about, so now that's only 9%. So we probably see 43, 4,300. Give us a full 10%. Boom. And then once we get there, maybe this is where we bottom out. And then um, we can start to see some basing here. And then this is where uh, buyers may step back in. Yeah. Now I could be wrong, but these are the two scenarios that I think could play out. All right. So in this scenario, we'll probably come down, bounce off the hundred day, what is the support, come back up, the 50 day turns into our resistance, right? And then we come back down, break demand, and then test uh 4300. Now let's go back to the NASDAQ. So for the NASDAQ, um, you know, the NASDAQ is a little different because we didn't, we didn't see all-time highs recently, right? S&P made all-time highs, whereas the NASDAQ hasn't made all-time highs since, you know, near the end of November. So the charts are a little bit different. Now, we're gonna have to see how it reacts to demand, but we could see something similar so where we might get a bounce, a dead cat bounce. I think a dead cat bounce is very possible where we might, you know, step in deeper into demand. Bounce, hit supply, and then um, a continuation, right? And then probably come back, we'll zoom out a little bit. Uh, So if we look at, so this level is key, this 14, 584 level. So you see we got strong support here. And that will put us at about 13%, 13% off the highs, which I think is reasonable. Uh, and then we can start to see uh, the market bounce. Right. We might get like a pin bar on the weekly. So where we come down, test this, but then buyers end up uh, push us back up to around the uh, 200 day. Right. What's up, Aki? <clears throat> why would buyers buy in demand? So why would they? Yeah, because the, the narrative has changed. So why would they buy there? I'm just asking. I'm just no, I think I think just based off technicals, right? I think, you know, I think a lot of algorithm algorithmic trading, you know, in demand, forcing us forcing a dead cat bounce, right? I don't think it will be like real asset managers buying there, but I think just based off, you know, the technicals and the algorithmic trading, I think we can bounce, we could bounce there, and then that that'll just set us up for probably a sixty one eight. Uh, a 61.8 or a 38.2 um, test, and then a continuation downward, right? Because there are some, there are some stocks that are at attractive levels right now, right? So I think we could see a bounce, but I don't think it'll be a reversal, right? I think it'll just be a dead cat bounce and then a continuation downward. But we just gotta kind of got to wait and see, especially when we get the, the, these job reports on Friday, I think it's really going to determine, you know, what happens from here. And I think that's really going to give the market some momentum in which direction it wants to go. Now, 
we did have, you know, a couple some news, you know, Intel, Intel got upgraded today. Um, they announced that they expect their chips to be on par as far as performance with AMD this year, but we'll see, we'll see what happens when those benchmark tests come out. And then they also announced that they were going to be starting producing GPUs. Right? So they're going to be competing with AMD and NVIDIA in the GPU space. All right. So Intel's making some moves. Let's look at um, Benzinga really quick. Get those exact numbers. So Northland Capital put a 62 on it today. And Tigris Financial put a 72 on it yesterday. So it looks like people are getting more um, interested in Intel. You know, the stock is trading at a P of 10, 10.5. So it's, it's, it's fairly cheap uh, when, evaluating, when evaluating it from a PE ratio compared to like your AMDs, your NVIDIAs and other people in, in the space. So, you know, it's pretty cheap down here at these levels. But, you know, if the if it turns out that you know, y'all know what I call him, Pat. I call him Pat the Cap because he's always capping. But we'll we'll have to see if you know it could um, compete with uh, AMD and Nvidia. So uh, you you just said a, a new CEO is capping? No, Pat Pat Gelsinger. I'm oh, saying okay. he's been capping. He's been capping for a couple of years, right? And that's how Intel, you know, fell back, fell behind AMD in terms of production and innovation. But, you know, I just don't trust anything he said as well. That's all I'm saying. Like he's saying that the chips are going to be performing as well as AMD. But I don't trust that until the benchmarks prove that. All right. And them entering the GPU space, I think is really interesting. But I don't know how profitable that, that will be. And, you know, it all comes down to the performance. So once we get those benchmark tests, I think we'll have a better idea of how well these chips or these GPUs can do. When are they when are they having the benchmark testing? Is it a date? No. So whenever the chips get released, usually you'll have, you know, um, you know, different like tech tech uh, blogs, tech blogs that run tests to compare the different chips. Right. So as soon as they get released, I don't know exactly which quarter they'll be released, but when they get released, you'll have, you know, different tech blogs running tests to see the performance, the power uh, consumption and things like that, comparing like the AMD chips, the Intel chips, the Qualcomm, you know, NVIDIA and all of these chips. I don't know exactly when, when they're set to release these new chips. So we'll see, we'll see if it checks out. Now we saw tech get hit hard today. Let's look at the market from, uh, let's look at the NASDAQ, the Dow. Actually, let's look at the Dow real quick. Um, all right, so the Dow today, interesting price action. The Dow was leading the market today you know, at the open throughout the day, the Dow was up while the NASDAQ and the S&P were down. And then you can see we had a nice head and shoulders here. You know, market started to peak around two o'clock as that uh, Fed report was coming out. And then you can see we, we slid, we got that cross on those EMAs and we slid, right? But the Dow, you know, it had a huge flip. It was up pretty strong. And then once that Fed, that Fed minutes came out, we slid. But, you know, Merck, Merck was up. Intel was up. Walmart. Let's look at the S&P. Right, so we had Nucor. Um, so a couple of the steel stocks were up. We had Nucor, Merck, like we talked about, 
So some more defensive names, right? CVS, Kroger, Intel, Walmart. So some defensive names popping off. A lot of our favorite, a lot of our favorite stocks were down significantly. Let's do it from a market cap, All right? So you can see Apple's down almost 3%. Microsoft is down almost 4%. Google down 5%. Tesla down over 5%. Facebook down over 4%. So you can kind of see some, some risk being taken off, right? And if you've been reading the outlooks from the, from the asset managers and the hedge funds, you know, they're looking to, at least BlackRock is looking to take some risk off based on exactly what kind of exactly what the Fed meeting uh, the, the minutes said today accelerating you know um, the tapering process and kind of pulling forward the date when we'll get rate hikes um, hold on hold on is this the same black rock that said they uh, overweight equities yeah so sound like they sold this out no nah, no nah. no no <laughs> They said they were trimming risk because they said they're still overweight equities, right? Because bond yields are negative, real yields are negative, right? But based on the Fed, um, you know, the Fed's reaction to the economy, this was the only risk of them accelerating the process and pulling forward the rate hikes. Right. So they're trimming risk. That doesn't mean they're they're risk off. They're not risk off. They're just trimming risk. So it'll make sense why we see like a pullback like today. Right. But you have to say you have to stay in equities right now. Like there's nowhere else that you could go. Where's the money gonna go? Where's the money gonna go, Aki? Inputs. Big call. That's still equities. <laughs> <laughs> so we got what else we got we got you know the top you know the top 20 was pretty much you know Pfizer was up a little bit but when we look at the sectors you know pretty much all sectors were down um besides pretty much all sectors were down the consumer defensive was the best performing sector, but even that was down. So, like I said, you know, more defense, um, like steel stocks, things like that. So you just got to see, and like I said, I think the um, let's look at energy really quick. That's the leading sector so far this year. So XLEs in supply. You can see this candle today, upside down hammer. So we might see that pull back a little bit. Let's look at crude oil futures. A right, similar pattern. Nice bounce out of demand. It's been trending up. But we could get a, um, you know, we could get a pullback here. You know, we could get a pullback. It looks like this is a 61.8 FIB, right? So you can see that's kind of acting as resistance right now. That's 61.8. So we might pull back a little bit, maybe to like the 38.2. You know, kind of like a wide cup and handle. And then maybe a continuation. But a lot of people are long uh, oil right now and energy seeing that as the, I don't know if you guys watched the Tom Lee uh, fund strats outlook. You know, a lot of, a lot of um, analysts and hedge funds are long uh, oil right now and energy to kind of uh, anticipate that being the best performing sector. Again, back to back years. So keep your eye out on energy uh, for a potential entry if you want to play that. Um, Let's look at Tesla, right? So remember I said Tesla was probably gonna come back to close that gap. All right, looks like we almost are closing that gap. We'll see how it reacts to this 50 day moving average. All 
And then, um, it was like Aki was saying, there's a huge gap on the yearly, right? Um, so I think you could pull back a little bit more. Let's look at the weekly. So on the weekly, it looks like a, a double top. So I think I think we can see Tesla pull back. And I, I would expect Tesla to kind of pull back because XLY needs to pull back as well. All right, similar pattern, double top. Got a three candle so far on the weekly. So I don't like this at all right now. I don't like how we got three bearish three candles, you know, everywhere on the ES. That's why I said, you know, just watch to see if we can get back above just 47.13. That's going to be key. Uh, for the week. What's up, Aki? So, um, can you go to the yearly chart on Tesla? Mm -hmm. All right, that's the weekly right now. All right. All right. So, we got a gap, right, from the close of last year, and we, you know, tried to run. But you know, Tesla gotta pay the gap tax. So NJ, I want you to um draw a trend line um from the close of last year and then um do a five percent, a ten percent, a fifteen percent, and a twenty percent level. Um so this way and anybody can do this. We we just showing y'all this so you can have an area where um you know, for entries, you know, if you're in puts, then it'd be your exit. So let's say you was in Tesla puts right now, you know, you could touch a trailing stop. As soon as we hit the 5%, you know, your stops is there, you're protecting your profits. If we keep sliding to the 10% mark, you know, you put your stop there. If you keep sliding, put your, uh, beyond 10%, put your stop, then go to the 15% level and then go to the 20% uh, level. And then wherever we figure it out, you know, price starts finding the demand, then now you know, all right, this is why I need to, you know, start having my buy orders. And you could pre-do this, you know, without, as, we, as you see MJ is doing it without any price action, meaning that the, can, the price don't have to get there. You already have your levels already ready to go. If you don't want to get in the puts, you can set your alerts. Um, so as they go off, you know, you set your antennas up. Let's say you want to allocate, I don't know, 30% to Tesla. You start your allocation, you start entering in the allocation at 5%, but you scale in. So you probably put like 2% in. Then we hit 10%. Probably can go like 5% in. So now you're 7% in. Then we go even deeper, 15 and 20. Then you could, you know, put the rest of the allocation in. This way you find in excellent entries um, and you get excellent discounts. So I just wanted to share that. I appreciate that. So if we're looking at, this is the 5, 10, 15, 20% um, corrections or pullbacks from the close of 2021. So we're looking at a thousand on a 5%, 950 on a 10, 900 on a 15, percent and then 850 on a 20%. Now, if we actually, let's do this. Let's look at a weekly. Uh, so if we do a year to date. So if we do a year to date, let's throw a fib on here. We could maybe see a 61 eight. You can see we bounced off the 50 earlier um you know near the end of december but i wouldn't be surprised if we do pull back um near this 800 level and we do have a weekly demand uh, right around there so it's possible possible that we do pull back you know um to that 618 so just uh keep that in mind wait for wait for uh wait for that wait for that entry Look at AMD. Okay. 
you know, AMD, and this is why, this is why, you know, understanding these candles can really help your trading because you can kind of anticipate uh, the price action, right? So last week, AMD had this upside down hammer, which is bearish. And then you can see, you know, we uh, opened the week a little bullish, but, you know, we had that sell off, right? So now we're back in demand. So we'll have to see how price reacts to this demand or if it falls even lower. Now, if we fall to, let's say we fall to 120, 119, 120. That's about a 26, 25, 25, 26% correction, right? So that might be an area that you wanna look at. Now let's do our, so that'll be low to 100 day, right? But I like the, um, I like this demand here a lot better. This 112, 110 level, right? That's where I will be looking to uh, get interested. All right, and that'll probably, by then, we'll probably be lined up with our 200 day moving average, All right? So you're gonna, you'll probably see that 200 day start to, you know, trend upward. And we'll probably see, you know, um, a 200 day test here on AMD over the next over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, go ahead. I... But all right, so we, we, we must understand also um AMD has added um pressure because they're buying Xilinx. Whenever a company buys another company, he's spending money. So, you know, sellers, I mean buyers don't like that. So um AMD may push even lower. Just be mindful of that. So they figure out the synergies of the company to uh you know reduce the um the cost so the balance sheet can start looking a little better. Yeah, definitely. And I think I think uh, AMD management said they're looking to close that by the by the end of March. So we'll probably get that deal, that Xilinx deal closed by um, by the end of first quarter. But, you know, it's going to be really important how we trade over these next couple of weeks, right? Um, if the Fed is looking to hike rates in March, like I said, that's pulling it up a couple of months forward. Um, so we might get that correction sooner than we had expected, uh, which, which kind of throws things off a little bit. But we just have to see, like, just the price action would tell us everything. And these jobs numbers on Friday, if these jobs numbers come come up really positive, um, we'll probably see the market pull back more because the stronger the employment numbers, um, the more reason the Fed has to hike rates sooner. Uh, so just a couple of things to, to keep in mind. Nvidia sold off. Oh, go ahead. Well, look, I want to add to that. Remember, the Fed got dual mandates mm -hmm. from employment and control inflation. Mm -hmm. It said in the statement, it sees that we have full employment. So now it's about to focus on controlling inflation. Right. And that's why the interest rates are going to go up. That's a fact. Um, we saw the 10 year spike today. All right. Ooh, 10 years actually breaking out. So keep your eye on that. So we saw the 10 year spike. Looks like it's breaking out of this pennant. Uh, so definitely keep your eye out on it on the 10 years. If that continues to rise, we might see more growth pull back. We do have a supply up here. So we just have to watch that. I don't, I don't know if we'll, I don't know. We just gotta, we just gotta wait and see. But it does look like it's breaking out out of this pennant, which looks like there's more upside. But at the end of the day, just mark your levels um, on the stocks that you want. You know, when, when, the, when the market starts to bottom out, 
if price hasn't reached your target price, um, like I've been saying, even when like you might have a specific level that you want to jump in a stock, price might it might not get there. So when you see the market start to find its footing or start to bottom out, don't be that person because I've missed entries doing this. I've missed entries waiting for a stock to get to a specific level, right? You have to be a little bit flexible. You have to be a little flexible. So when that market starts to turn around, when you start to see the NASDAQ and the SPY start to double bottom, starts to A space, starts to inverse head and shoulders, you know, pick up your position, start to scale in because you don't want to be that person that's waiting for this perfect entry and you end up missing entry as a whole. Right. So be a little bit flexible with your entries and use the indexes as a gauge uh, for when you want to get in. Yeah. So got NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is falling. We do, like I said, it, was, it had to probably come and close this gap. So we had this gap down at 267. So we probably closed that gap, test this demand around 265, 270. And then we'll see how price reacts. If it, if it breaks that, there is another gap here down at 233. Right? That needs to get filled as well. Um, so just keep that in mind. Patience is the name of the game, y'all. It's all about patience. Now keep your eyes out on video because it's looking it's looking like it's getting into it's getting close to demand territory in terms of the RSI. Right. Right now we are 20% off highs. 20%. If we pull back down to close this gap at 230, we'll be 33% off highs. It's close to that 200 debt. So there might be some opportunity here for an NVIDIA entry. So watch, you know, keep your eyes out on NVIDIA for these next couple of weeks. There might be some opportunities here to, uh, to scoop that up. Now, if we look at SMH, SMA broke, broke out, but it double topped, right? You see we double topped up here around 316. Boom. And now we now we pulling back a little bit. There is a gap down here, so we might come back down here to fill this gap. Uh, but wait, you know, wait to that that one hundred day. If you're looking for entry on SMH, there is another gap here as well, which lines up with our hundred day. Right. So I will be targeting around closer to that two eighty uh, for SMH entry. 280, if you can get in at 280, you know, those 300 calls, you can sleep very, very nice with those 300 calls, January, 2024, right? It might not be, it might not print as much as like a 320, 350, but you're gonna be deep in the money and you won't have anything to worry about. That's just a straight liquidity play. I actually have a SMH 300 and I actually want another one so I'm actually going to be looking myself to get back in and pick up another one because I'm expecting uh, SMH to go to 500 based on the compound annual growth rate. You know, it, it averages. So if we throw this in here, if we throw this in the portfolio visualizer real quick, SMH. Um, so it's averaging about 26%. Hold on, let's see if, if we go back more. Hold on. All right, so let's leave that. So I swore it was higher. It should be higher, I guess, based on the time period. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so if we do since the financial crisis, we do since 2009, 
to 2021. Oh, okay, that's why, because we added in 2022. That's why it dropped. All right, so we're looking at a 26% uh, CAGR. Um, so let's say conservatively. So if we do 25%, that puts us at 385. And then let's say we do another 25%, that puts us at 482, right? So I think, you know, um, and if you if you throw this into analyze risk profile, you'll see that this contract can do 700 percent. Um, oh, Sheena. Um, now that usually the farther majority of the time, the farther out of the money uh, performs better because the rate of return is higher, right? So like because it's a cheap because it's cheaper the rate of return is usually uh, a lot faster, right? So like if I get a contract that's 2,500 and it goes up 500, that's a 20% gain. But if I get a contract that's 1,500 and it goes up 500, that's a 33% gain, right? So because the farther out of the money contracts are cheaper, usually they perform better, right? Um, But yeah, I think this uh, this three hundred can do really well, and you can always throw this into the risk profile and kind of, you know, analyze what it will do in the future, right? But I think um, when I threw this in, this SMH contract does about like seven hundred percent if it gets up up there towards five uh, five hundred. Um, but you know, target that two eighty. You know, if it you know you can scale in at two eighty. And if you're able to average down, if it hits the 200 day, then average down. Um, but you know the 100 day strategy, you know you can look back in the past, um, it works pretty effectively. Uh, Drew, I said risk profile. So in um, Thinkorswim, you could do a risk profile, um, and then you could kind of test what your profit will be based on where the stock price gets. So like, for example, um, I was back testing or forward testing a, a XLK, uh, XLK January 24, 200 strike. And XLK gets to 250, which I'm expecting based on the compound annual growth rate. That's like a, um, and then with the risk profile, you have to put in the date of your exit. So if you have a January 24, you're looking to get out probably like August, September, right? And if XLK goes to 250, that's about like a 420%, right? Because our this is our profit, 40, like 4,100. And the price that we paid was 1,000. So that's about like a 400% return on that XLK 200 if XLK gets to 250 by September, 2023. It's just a tool that you can use to kind of, if you're planning out your trades or planning out your portfolio, you could throw this in here to kind of, you know, quantify it right that's one thing that mark stressed with us was like quantifying the numbers right it's a great way to quantify and know exactly because some people say well i want a thousand percent on that on this contract right but where are you getting those numbers from like how do you know you're going to get a thousand percent but if you can actually put it into the, the simulator you can see exactly what's realistic based on where the stock price would be right in this risk profile i might do a video on that Y'all want to see a video on this first profile to kind of see how it works? Put a one in the chat. I could do a quick video on here. Kind of. All right, cool. Yeah, I got like 10 videos I got to do. I keep promising y'all videos. I got y'all. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, it's a great tool. It's a great tool. Um, you can find the compound annual growth rate on Portfolio Visualizer. This is where I like to go. So um, if you go to portfoliovisualizer.com, you'll see the back test portfolio, right? And then you could just put a ticker in. Usually I do since the financial crisis. So usually I do like since 2009. 
So like if I want to see what XLK has been averaging over the last, what, um, 12, 12 years, 12, 13 years, um, you could, and you could test multiple at, at the same time. So you could test like three different tickers. If I could do XLK, XLY, put them in different portfolios, 100% allocation, SMH, then do an analyzed portfolio. It'll show me what their compound annual growth rate is. So this is what they typically average a year uh, over the last 12 years. And then you could kind of use that as a baseline um, for, for, for what your strike price will be or where you, or when you plug it into the simulator, where you think the strike price, what, what the stock price would be. So you can kind of estimate what your profit would be. Yeah, this record, the market review recordings are posted every day on, on, on the Mastermind Group YouTube. Right. So um, yeah, it'll be posted later today. Uh, on uh, it'll be posted later today, Daniel. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, Aki, you got anything else? Yeah, yeah. Go to um, go to Mara, please. Bitcoin miner. Oh, they broke, they broke the man. So we talked about this on Monday, well, and last week. When we said Bitcoin was going to slide. So for all my short-term traders and my long-term traders, you had a great entry on puts. But the short-term traders, the 29 puts went from $0.09. Cents, that's right, $0.09 cents to a dollar. Today? Yes, today. To the 29 puts? Mm-hmm. Mm. Nine cents to a dollar. Mm. Is that 1100 yeah. percent? Mm-hmm. That's two walkaways that Mara gave up in the last two weeks, right? Yeah. yeah. Sheena, say it again. <laughs> the people in the back. That's two walkaways, y'all. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my up and on the way down. Dang. Yeah, let's look at Bitcoin real quick. So Bitcoin, we still in demand. I think we can see 42,000 where we have our daily demand. So I wouldn't be surprised if we pull back a little bit more to 42. But if we break, oh man. If we break 42 grand, we, we'll probably see 35K. And that is not helping my square contract at all right now. Man, come on now. You, didn't, you know I didn't told them dumpster fires. They dumpster fires. Leave them alone. They went to tie themselves. they crypto, which is volatile, which they don't control. So they about to get this work. Um, and I'm calling out Mara 22 puts. You want to get some long terms. Because it's Bitcoin to go to 34,000. That's where we going. Yeah, Bitcoin, you know, if we don't hold, if we don't hold this level, uh, it could get ugly. It could get ugly. It could get real ugly. And there's a gap here. There's a gap here at 34 grand. So let's keep, keep that in mind. Really strong double top. Really strong double top. But Bitcoin is setting up for a nice cup and handle. So if we get to that MJ35,000 zone, the man, and it holds. When, let me let me give you some perspective. That's square probably what? What square like 150 right now? Or yeah. 143. Okay. So that, that's square like 120, right? So if Bitcoin find demand, that means yo, don't, you, yo, don't put that energy out, bro. What 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 no, I'm I'm giving positive energy. Hold on. 
if Bitcoin find the man, right? That means Square gonna find the man also. And then if Bitcoin go, go goes to a hundred thousand, that means Square going to like two fifty three hundred. So get your twenty three twenty fours together. I'm just a novice. Don't listen to me. <laughs> No, it's possible. No, it's not financial possible. advice. None of this is financial advice at all. Um, but let's, uh, you know, Square has this trend line, right? It's kind of been respecting this trend line, so we'll see if this if this holds. It's kind of where it's where it's at right now, right? So. If we break this and we don't pin bar, if we don't get like a bullish doji or something like that, 35,000. 35,000. And that means Mara's going down. That means BTBT is going down. Um, so, yeah, something to keep an eye out on. Is it micro strategies tied to Bitcoin as well? Micro strategies? Yeah. What's the ticker? Um, hold on, let me look. I think, it, I think it's M like MRSTR. Oh, yeah. yeah. MSTR. It looks like Mr. Yeah. yeah, all of these, and anything tied to Bitcoin right now is in, is, is in trouble. If, if Bitcoin doesn't hold, Right now, it's I'm trying to tell y'all. That's the put walk away. You heard it first on market review. The put walk away. I'm done. <laughs> not yeah. financial advice. Do not. Not at all. Not at all. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, do not. Do not say, oh, I'm hopping in my puts because I heard it on market review. It will end in tears if you don't know what you're doing, right? Um, how's Ethereum looking? I like Ethereum's chart a lot better. It's, it's more, it's more sane. You know, it's a, it's a it's a very nice bull flag here on Ethereum. Looks like we'll probably test the man. You know, thirty four hundred, and then we'll see how it reacts. You know, to our demand zone. Actually, we have we have a nice daily here as well. Actually, got stacked dailies. I gotta check out my um, look at Cardano in a little bit. Let's check out Cardano. So crypto is supposed to be a, a inflation hedge, right? H base on on Cardano. You said it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be. So if we going into a deflationary environment, what that mean for crypto? You ain't gotta make that face. You don't gotta make that face, <laughs> Hey. Economics. <laughs> economics. <laughs> Y'all better understand those economics. It might not be good. Might not be good. Let's look at gold futures. The market is throwing all these different kinds of signals right now. It's like, we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see over these next couple of weeks. Everything is gonna everything is gonna start to make more sense, you know, because crypto crypto is down, um, gold is sideways, silver is sideways, bond market is trash. I mean, we saw a spike in the ten year today, um, but bond market is trash. Asset managers are saying there's still risk on. Right, it's a lot of conflicting signals, but. Everything, everything will make sense over the next couple of weeks. Um, 
Yeah, let's look at CrowdStrike. Yeah. Yeah, gold could be shaping up, though. I mean, with inflation running hot, I mean, we could. I was expecting more of a uh, more of a spike, but, you know, there's something to keep an eye out on. Uh, CrowdStrike, CrowdStrike had a strong correction. Oh, we broke support. Um, so we'll see if buyers can get us get us back above 180. Um, if not, uh, it might get bad. It might get really bad if buyers don't hold this level. All right, buyers don't hold the lowest um, 176. It is it is severely oversold right now. Our RSI is at 28. So I would wait for confirmation. Don't try to catch the falling knife. But this could be an entry here soon on uh, CrowdStrike. But I would wait for confirmation. I'm down 40% off the highs. MJ, are, are we in a Tina environment? For sure. For anyone that doesn't know what that means, there is... There is no alternative. Where is the money gonna go? Cash. Oh, it's not inflation. Because <laughs> <laughs> you want to know why? I mean, cash. I mean, like no positions. You just watch. Yeah, but still, inflation is super high. But it's going down. That's why they're saying about the raise rates. Yeah, but still, like, all right, so if I'm cash, inflation is, what, 4 to 6%? So I'm losing 4 to 6% a year. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I ain't saying you're going to be in cash the whole year. I'm saying you're going to be in cash while things shake out and the, and the Fed do what they said they're going to do or not going to do. Like, it's uncertainty. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's liquidation time. Liquidate everything, y'all. Everything. It's like, no, I'm just playing. Not financial advice. Not financial advice. Not financial advice. I'm kind of, I'm kind of playing because you might want to get some cash. If you don't have any cash right now, you definitely want to be at least 25, 20, 25% cash, right? To take advantage of uh, any coming correction. Let's look at the VIX. Do not, do not liquidate everything, y'all. <laughs> We're just playing unless you know unless you're poor, unless it makes sense for you but oh we got a three oh we got a three on the vix on the weekly and we got a three on the es oh man i'm, I'm sorry did i not call 50 vix calls yeah months from now you said the vix was going down whoa 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 I put the lever on one day and now you just gonna call me out like that? <laughs> you better stop it, bro. I've been calling Vic, 50 VIX calls for like since market review been on. You better stop it. <laughs> <laughs> we got a three on the weekly. If we close this week with this three candle, three candle. All right, let me put this side by side so y'all so y'all see what I'm talking about. Let's, let's clear these. Let's clear these up. So we got a correlation on the VIX and the ES right now. All right. So right now, this is the weekly. We have a strong bearish engulfing three candle slash outside bar on the ES with a bullish engulfing outside bar on the VIX. All right, now I did, actually, let me put that back. Y'all see, I did call the spike though, All right? I did say we were gonna spike. Now, I originally said we were gonna spike and then pull back, but based on the price action, I think we could go higher, but we just gotta wait and see. Job numbers is going, job numbers is going, tomorrow might be a little, I think tomorrow might be 
uh, base. I think we might base tomorrow, trade sideways a little bit until the jobs numbers come out Friday. And then that's gonna give us more direction. If the jobs numbers come out really strong, you'll see that VIX spike and you'll see us continue to pull back. All right. Um, How about this? What's, what's the percentage of ADPs um, I'm sorry, how much market share does ADP have of the HR market? Oh, no idea. That's a good question. But the fact that they, they have a report, it's a it's a public they publicly traded, right? ADP? I think so, yeah. Yeah. It's a publicly traded company that puts out a report that the Fed looks at. Crazy last year. Forty percent. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm. That was a nice run. Yeah, it was. Very nice run. Very nice. Yeah, just watch the watch the price action, y'all. We got Somebody it. in the chat asks, uh, what's a good job numbers on the jobs? What number is a good job report? Um, <laughs> it depends on what you mean by good. <laughs> I mean, good for the market means a bad job report. But um, anything above estimates, right? Um, depending on what the estimates are. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, what is it? BLS. BLS.gov. Job estimates. No economic calendar. Right. So anything, anything above estimates is, I mean, technically good. It's good for the economy. But right now in the market, um, you know, if the jobs numbers comes out good, you'll see the market pull back because that means the Fed has more reason to accelerate the taper and hike rates earlier. So median forecast. So median forecast right now is 422,000. Um, last week, I believe it was 210. So, you know, anything that's in line with that or above is technically a good report, but it's going to negatively affect the market. And anything below that would be a bad report, but you might see the market, you know, um, slightly trade upwards a little bit. Um, but the estimate is 422,000 for non-farm payrolls. All right. All right, y'all. Hope this was helpful. Hope this was valuable. Hope you learned something. Yes, we did. Thank you, MJ. Um, I just want to leave y'all with this. So, and did you pull up the FinViz report for the heat map? Or, or so show what sectors was hot, what was not? Oh, the sector map? Mm -hmm. Not the whole map, the the, uh, the bars, the horizontal bars. When it shows, um, what is the sector map? But The groups. Yeah, there we go. That, right? Mm -hmm. This one you know is scary. Consumer defensive was down. I mean, damn, where, where do you go and hide? I just want to leave y'all with that. Yeah. No, that's a fact. That's a fact. Um, cash is a position. Cash is a position. Cash is a position. Say it again for the people in the back, Axel. I definitely opened up some cash myself. One and a half half, y'all. I mean, I know a lot of us learned our lesson um, in, the, in the past, but you definitely want to have um, some cash to take advantage. Uh, what's the number metric we should see with that? Uh, I got a question. What should we be looking for in the bond market? Um, um, just pay, pay, pay attention to real yields. Real yields are going to determine you know, when the market starts to shift towards 
uh, more, you know, more, uh, more bond buying, which is going to further affect the stock market. But, and I would just pay, pay attention to the, well, one thing you could do is read BlackRock's outlook, the weekly commentary to get an understanding of the um, bond market and how it affects the stock market. But um, like I've been saying, because of inflation, the bond market right now is not attractive. And Mark actually posted this on Instagram. You're guaranteed to lose money. Like, like I've been saying for weeks now, it's like, it's not, asset managers don't want to go into bonds right now because they're going to lose money, right? So what you want to be paying attention to is the pace of rate hikes. If we see, if the Fed, you know, starts to increase the percentage of the rate hikes, then that's something that you should pay attention to because then bonds are going to look more attractive and we'll see um, more money. The reason why equities ran up so much uh, last year was because bond markets were trash. And anytime, and Tom Lee had a, a really good correlation with this, anytime real yields are negative, the stock market runs up, right? Anytime real yields are negative. So as real yields start to, to get positive again, it's going to impact the stock market and that's going to be good for the bond market. So you'll see asset managers putting more money into bonds and you'll see the overall stock market, um, you know, you'll see some of those growth names get hit even more. Yeah, Marcel. Yeah, there is an inverse relationship between the market, the S&P and the VIX, yeah. So it's typically when the market is pulling, S&P is pulling back, you see the VIX, you see the VIX going up. Um, all right, y'all. Great session. Happy y'all learned something. Um, yeah, I think right now the Fed, I think, I think we're priced in at what? 1%, 1.25. I think 1.5, I think 1.5 or 2% by the end of the year. Somebody could correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, like 1.5 or 2% by the end of the year. But this is a this is a slower pace. Let me find this graphic one more time because this is this is important. Let me find this graphic for y'all before we end this. So I, I want y'all to get this. Because not only is rate hikes important, but this the pace, right? The pace of rate hikes is important. I got a thesis. Y'all ready? Yeah. I'm going to walk y'all down this rabbit hole. So, the agenda is... Hold on. You know, before oh. you, now, before you jump in, I just wanted to answer David's question. Well, the Fed doesn't look at CPI data as as the, the gauge for inflation. They actually look at PCE. So, PCE is closer to 4%, right? But, yeah, real yields will still be negative. Um, probably until till next year. It's probably till 2023. Go ahead, I my bet. It's all good. All right. Welcome to the rabbit hole. Um, so right now we got high inflation, right? I mean, cost of goods, cost of materials, all of them is outlandish, right? Now Biden signed the um infrastructure bill, right? And all that money going to start funneling in because all these projects to start start rolling, right? So, but they need prices of, of, of the materials to come down, right? Also, we got GM and Ford uh, and Rivian and all the rest of them, you know, about to transition everybody to these EVs. Guess what? Those materials got to start coming down in price, right? For this electrification of the entire infrastructure of America to happen. Not to mention manufacturing is coming back to America, right? In the form of these chip providers, TSM, um, Intel, a um, couple others, right? So we need the number, the inflation numbers to come down. So all these jobs could come and 
all this production for the GDP, which really matters, right? And that's the end goal, the GDP. Don't forget that. Um, so therefore, everything is going as planned. We had the we had the market correction because of COVID. Boom. Everybody stay home. All right. Pharmaceutical companies are gonna give y'all a couple billion, ain't about nothing. Get these vaccines ready that don't work. But that's another story for another day. Uh then we get this herd immunity. All right, we got the vaccines, we got the herd immunity. All right, bet we about to open everything back up. All right, let's get these folks back to work. Oh man, we didn't pump too much money in the economy. We got high inflation. Don't worry about it. Jerome, you got it? Yeah, I got it. Boom. We're gonna raise these rates. We're gonna bring these prices down. I right, four GM or oh, CES? Oh, you yeah, about to produce all these EVs? All right. Oh, um, Tesla, you about to drop this Model Three? Even the Model Two? Oh, twenty thousand? Bet we got you. We're gonna bring these materials costs down because I remember lumber was out astronomical, doing crazy numbers. Um, aluminum, steel, stupid numbers. Biden, yo, we bought, we gonna sign this in uh, infrastructure bill, but. These prices can't be what they are. You can't afford to pay any these prices because we got other uh, policies we need to be coming through. What's the new one? Build back better. You know, we got to keep folks going. So to bring y'all back, we're going to bring inflation down, get these numbers right. We're going to get folks back in these jobs and we're going to pump these EVs out. So by the end of the year, four going to be like $45. Mm. I'm gonna leave out with that. Mm. Thank you. Nah, I appreciate that. What's uh, what's for trading that right now? As far as the PE, we're trading at thirty-four PE, wow. higher than I expected. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna do a deeper dive in the floor, but. I digress. Uh, so here's the here's the plot that I was referring to as far as the historical Fed response and then the anticipated Fed response. So you can see that the rate hikes in the past have been um, more aggressive, right? And you know we're kind of pricing in a uh, slower a slower pace, right? Um, and that's another reason why uh, the bond market right now doesn't really look attractive to asset managers because of the slow pace of the rate hikes as well. Uh, so just wanted to show y'all that. <clears throat> All right, y'all. Appreciate y'all. Recording will be posted uh, later. We got the mindfulness class tonight. So tap into that. Um, my guy, Keith, he's going to be, you know, dropping some gems. You know, mindset is everything, right? So it's important to get your mind right, you know, can't be a can't be a great trader without a you know a great mind all right be in tune with your emotions be in tune with your mindset so we're going to be talking about that tonight so that's at eight o'clock so make sure you tap into that all right all right everybody see y'all tonight everybody have a great night peace and abundance much love peace and abundance. Thank you. thanks mj peace and abundance